Welcome everybody to Geography 1301 at Palo Alto College. I am your professor uh, for this semester, uh, Ryan Sherman. In this video, I am going to be introducing you to the class, just as you would be sitting in the first day of a classroom and me standing in front and going over what the class is about, what's in the syllabus, the expectations and requirements of passing this class. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please shoot me an email with, uh, with, with your concerns or questions and I will uh, get back to you about them. I'm a real person, I'm here at PAC. You just happen to be taking the class internet-based, which has you go at the same pace as the regular class but you just don't have to show up and listen to my lectures. You're expected to read the book, um, review my lecture slides on your own, and take the assignments and turn in the work uh, when it is due. Ah, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Ryan Sherman, your instructor. I'm not just in floating head on the internet. I'm, professor at Palo Alto College. I've been there for about seven years now. Uh, I am the geography department along with uh, Martha Cruz Bach, who I uh, took over for and who still is an adjunct professor and picks up classes from time to time. Uh, my office is Brazos 207. Uh, stop by, say hi. I'll have my office hours posted there and I will announce it uh, once classes start and uh, we get the final on what class is when, uh, for sure. I live in San Antonio uh, with my partner. Uh, she's an old college friend of mine and we've been together for a while now. She is a real estate agent. Uh, she has a daughter who's 13. Oh, I need to turn that down. I have a son, he's eight. We have chickens in our backyard here in San Antonio. You can have up to six. Uh, we have six, probably get away with more, but uh, no roosters, they crow, don't lay eggs. And price of eggs these days, it's awesome to have chickens. I have a big garden, I like gardening. Um, what else? Um, I like wrenching on cars, uh, Volkswagen cars uh, to be specific. Not the old, old ones, but like 70s, 80s, 90s models, Volkswagens. <clears throat> Those are the ones I like. We have a, I have a fleet of about, well, I have four, four or five at any given time. Uh, so I like working on them older cars, uh, keeping them running. Uh, plus, then I don't have a car payment every month, so that's a good thing for me on a teacher salary. Yes. Uh, what else? I like cooking. I like food. I like eating. I like eating good food. I like baking. Uh, cakes, cupcakes, breads, anything to do with flour and carbs. That's that's my go-to. Uh, pancakes, waffles, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I also teach world regional geography, not just physical geography. So if you're interested in another uh, three credit hours, I think it's science, uh, world regional geography. So if you are interested in learning more about the world from a human perspective. Um, governments, religions, languages, uh, social interaction, um, world regional geography is a great class to take. As far as my background goes, mm, I'm not actually a hardcore physical geographer, right? Um, within geography, there are multiple sub-disciplines. Physical geography is one of them. Uh, I have worked uh, when I was studying at Tex Texas State under uh, Jim Peterson, Dr. Peterson, who is the author of the book we're reading and using. Um, one of the premier physical geographers in the United States. Uh, I was really lucky to work under him uh, for a couple semesters uh, as I was working on my master's and uh, PhD. My focus uh, in geography is actually more GI science, um, geographic information science, because my background uh, began with computer science. I am a computer scientist. I worked 
for British Petroleum. I've worked for Amoco. I worked for Sprint. I've worked at a, I started an internet uh, provider um, back in the 90s. I program in probably 10 different languages. I'm, I'm a hacker. Um, got in big trouble for doing that when I was a kid. Uh, paid the price. Uh, did a lot of fun stuff. Um, so I'm a programmer, a computer scientist, hardware, software engineer at heart. Um, I'm also an archaeologist. My undergraduate degree from the University of Texas at Austin is anthropology with a focus on the Yucatan Peninsula, the Maya region. However, my master's work was actually here uh, in these ruins at Zacatecas, which is central Mexico, the, the Chalchuites culture. And so I did a lot of work and lived for a while uh, in Mexico uh, working on my master's, which was part archaeology, part geography, part ge uh, computer science in understanding the distribution of habitational sites uh, in the valley to better understand how this civilization developed and lived cohesively and maybe help understand their eventual decline after about seven or eight hundred years. When they came, they showed up, they flourished in this valley and then just went away. Why did they do it? What what led to the rise? What led to their decline? Was something I approached from a archaeological perspective using computer science to write programs to analyze their habitats in the valley and then use geography to understand how they interacted with their landscape. I talk about this a little bit throughout the lecture slides, and so you'll see some familiar themes of computer science and archaeology and geography all tied in there as I use my real world experiences as examples in this class. Okay, so let's get to the class and the class syllabus. All right. This is the Canvas landing page for the classroom. So you might be in section 19, you might be in a different section, but it's an online section. When you log into Canvas and go to your dashboard, um, you know, Geo 1301 section whatever should appear. You click it, you get to here. This is your landing page. As you can see, here's a link to my email address and here's a link to the YouTube channel. I highly encourage you go to this, click, subscribe. I've got walkthrough videos for all of the lab assignments, um, instructions for the classroom project, the class project, and a few other um, helpful videos, including this one, uh, to help you through the semester. My office is uh, room 207. Did I say 206? Well, I'm pretty sure I said 207, right? Yes. So you can usually find me there, but please email me first if you uh, want to make an appointment. Uh, to make sure that I am not in a meeting or somewhere else at the time that you show up because <clears throat> I might have a scheduling conflict. So please read the class syllabus and check announcements and then go over the class structure. Okay, uh, The announcements are here in the left hand nav and you'll see there are a couple welcomes, a couple tips, a couple tricks, uh, something to use later in the semester about where a video is and then some information about uh, Palo Alto's Club Earth. If you're interested in joining a student organization, I highly recommend Club Earth. It so our class syllabus can be found here by clicking the link and, and it'll pull it up or download it. You can also go into the files section here in Canvas. I have copies of the discussions, uh, the lab assignments, and my lecture slides. Normally, in a classroom setting, I will stand up in front of class and give a lecture based on the chapter's information. Now, what this is, it's a little hard to see the chapter. There we go. For each chapter, I've taken out what I think is the most important uh, information within each of the chapters and uh, summarized them into a PowerPoint slide. And then I give my own personal take um, <clears throat> and perspective on the material. All right. 
All right, back to <clears throat> the main folder. You'll see that here is the syllabus. Let me blow this up. All right. So the purpose of this class is to familiarize yourself with physical processes that shape the earth. You're going to learn all about how the earth works. It is an extremely complex living, breathing uh, system of connected components that we will break down, like the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, the biosphere, the atmosphere. We will learn about each of those systems and components and then how they interact with each other to form the world itself and looking at it through the lens of geographic terms. <clears throat> There's a text required. You have access to this text already. I'll show you how to get there in a bit. No worries. So we are covering most of the chapters in the book. You should read the chapters in the book. There are quizzes to take for each chapter. There are exercises. There are extra credit assignments to do for each chapter. Um, all that is available um, through Canvas on MindTap, which I'll show you how to get to in a minute. <clears throat> this class is full of different kinds of assignments. I haven't just... Um, funneled or channeled your creative um, aptitude in, into one thing like just tests or just quizzes or just writing assignments. It's, it's a little bit of a lot of stuff. So hopefully um, you will be able to balance and explore different modes of learning throughout this semester in this class. Okay? Activities are going to be grouped in modules. We will work on one module have a test, wrap up that, and then move on to the next one, which corresponds to the spheres that I just previously mentioned. Okay? All assignments will be uploaded to Canvas, uh, especially because this is an internet-based class. Okay? Please don't email me the assignment unless you've spoken to me and gotten approval to turn it in late or you have an excuse and we've discussed it. Um, so that, that I, I know how to handle it, okay? If it can be uploaded to Canvas, please upload it to Canvas. Um, what that does is it provides a paper trail, if you will, to cover your butt and my butt about who turned in what, when, and what was turned in, right? You can't, uh, you can't trick or fool or make up um, when you turned in assignment when you really didn't, and I can't say you never turned it in when you really did. Okay. Here is the grading rubric for this class. It's a straightforward A, B, C, D, F, every 10 points from 100 down to 60. Now, the way grading works in this class is a graded, weighted system. Okay. Your quizzes, which you have about, I don't know, 15 of them or so, maybe 10 to 15, total combined together only amount to 5% of your final grade. That means each quiz is worth about half a percent. It's not going to kill you to miss a quiz or two. Probably you won't even notice it on your final grade. But things like your discussions, you'll have about 10 uh, short discussions. In all, those are worth 30%. Likewise, your lab exercises. You'll have these short little real-world lab exercises to do as homework. And if there's six of them, that means each one is worth 5% of your final grade. If you don't do two labs, you're at a 90 at best if you've got 100 on everything. That's how important these assignments are. And you can tell by the percentage, if you miss or don't do your work, it becomes increasingly more difficult to pass this class. Okay? There's an end of semester project we'll talk about and work on throughout the semester. That's worth 15%, that's huge. That's a letter grade and a half uh, that's due at the end of the semester. That can make or break you. Uh, your exams are also each worth 5%. So your exams, your tests, um, they're going to be online uh, through Canvas, through the online learning system, and it's open note, open internet. There's no proxy, there's no staring over your shoulder, but do your own test. Um, you'll get one shot to take it, 
uh, unlimited time up until the due time and day, which is usually midnight at some day. And go for it. There's no reason why you can't get 100%. Uh, there are true, false, multiple choice, matching. Uh, there's no writing. There's no interpretation. I give you the correct answer for every single question. It's up to you to figure out which answer is the correct answer or answers per question. Okay. Um, if you have an issue with taking the test, please email me right away and we'll work out the issue. Okay. You have six small homework lab exercises to do in this class. Now, they're not full-blown chemistry labs where you go in and sit down in front of a bunch of accoutrements and uh, like try to make things explode. Um, I wish. But this is applying geography to real-world scenarios so you can kind of get a feel of, of why this is important to learn and how this is helpful, how this is going to help you moving forward in your life, like saving your life and stuff. Okay, um, they probably take about an hour to two hours each. Uh, please don't wait until the last minute to do them. Uh, the earlier you do them, if you run into problems or issues, uh, go to the YouTube webpage, watch the videos. Uh, if you still have questions, email me or schedule an office or Zoom appointment and I'll help you out. Your final project. We'll get into your final project. Um, throughout the semester. Don't worry about it right now, but it uses a scientific method. We're going to come up with an idea. You're going to come up with an idea. I'm going to work with you on it. We're going to research that thought or idea or question or topic, and you're going to report or make a presentation or develop a model or a web page or something that gives scientific information to me about that in terms of how it relates to geography and the world. Okay. Discussion policies. There's some short um, writing exercises online, which is excellent for online classes, to discuss with your colleagues topics that you're learning throughout the semester. Okay. Um, each assignment has uh, instructions, detailed instructions, and if you have any questions or concerns, please email me and I'll, I'll help you through it. Um, please note that one of the requirements on the discussion is to reply to somebody else uh, for full credit, to get a point for that. Um, it's highly encouraged uh, to, to read other people's thoughts and ideas uh, and, and comment on them. Please keep your comments thoughtful and constructive and more than just a short quip. Like write a sentence or two or three that shows me and the other person that you actually read and thought about what they wrote. Okay. If you're the first person um, to post, and I know it says under 24 hours before, but at any time, if you're the first person to post, uh, you can just write first post and then make your post, or at the end, write first post, or reply to yourself. Um, I don't think it's fair to make you wait until somebody else replies to reply to them. If you're first, congratulations, you don't have to make a reply. You will get credit as long as you let me know somehow that your post is the first post. Because I can't tell that when I'm grading. Now, if I see five people all say first post, I'm going to actually go back to the board and look to see whose the first post is. And probably if there are two at the top or three at the top. Y'all could have all been writing at the same time, so you'll all get credit. Man, but you're, if yours is the eighth post down, I'm not going to give you that first post credit because it's definitely not the first post, okay? <laughs> General structure. There are due dates. There are minimum lengths of assignments, and we're going to be moving through this semester, and there's going to be something due about one assignment or one thing a day or every other day. Now, this might seem a lot, but it's not really. We're moving through this material over, what, three months? Some January, February, March, April, basically four months 
to go through these four modules. Now, I have students who take this class in the summertime, and that's a one a month long semester. They do the same amount of work in four weeks that you're given four months. And most everybody in the summer passes with an A or a B. So this is extremely doable, right? When you come at me and say, well, I don't have time, that's, that excuse doesn't hold water. You have time. You might lose an hour of sleep or two or have to double down on the coffee like I do. But if you really want this, you will make time to do this. Okay. Assignments. Minimum length of assignments. Every question for a grade that I assign to you should have a number after it. 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus. That indicates the number of sentences. 2 plus means two or more sentences that directly answer the question. You're free to write more. Like, I think that this is a great question. Um, I looked into this a little bit and this is what I found and then answer the question. But the padding in front and padding at the end after, before, after you actually address and answer the question is considered part of that plus. Like I want two, if I say two plus, I want two solid sentences that directly address that question and, and answer it hopefully well. Okay. If you don't write the bare minimum number of sentences, it's guaranteed that you will automatically lose some points because I feel that that is the, the minimum number of sentences required to convey a thoughtful and well-placed answer on the piece of paper. Attendance. Your assignments are your attendance. If you don't turn in assignments, that's missing class. Excessive absences may result in you being dropped. Nobody wants you to get an F. I don't want you to get an F. I'd rather protect your GPA and get that W. Okay. If you have an excused absence, please reach out to PAC and turn in your paperwork to the office, whatever office that is, I'm not really sure, but it's like, talk to your advisor, talk to your counselor. Um, I think it's them or, or student services, I believe the student services building. Turn in your paperwork to them. They will notify me of your excused absence. Um, you can send me an email, say I'm missing class, I got a flat tire, or you know, I'm missing class, I have to go to a funeral, whatever it is, that's great, I appreciate it, but you have to turn in some paperwork to be excused, because I don't know if you really got a flat tire, or you just wanna spend a day at the beach. Nothing wrong with spending a day at the beach, but I can't excuse your absence for that, right? That, that, that one's on you. Trust me, I'd rather be at the beach, but we've got work to do, and I can't just excuse that. It has to come from PAC, so work with me. Bring your excuse, turn it in, they'll notify me, I'll give you an excuse, I'll work with you, I'll give you extensions, I will work with you as long as... I have the ability to do that, okay? So if you empower me, I'll empower you. Um, you're not going to be in class, so don't really worry much about this electronic device policy. That's more for my uh, in-person classes. Late work policy. All right, there are three dates for every Canvas assignment. Some of them are the same. You have an available date. In every module, everything becomes available, okay? So you have from the beginning of that module to the end of the module to turn things in by the time they're due. You could do the entire module in the first two or three days if you wanted. It should all be open. Now, I don't open up the entire class because um, to protect my sanity, right? To grade things, I'm moving through multiple classes with multiple students of 1301. And when I'm in the hydrosphere module, I'm in hydrosphere mode. 
if you do everything ahead of time, I'm not going to be able to get to them and grade them, and I have to grade in a certain amount of time. I have to respond in a certain amount of time. So each month, each module, about every three to four weeks, will open up. You will be given that time to turn them in in a staggered uh, time period if you want, or do them all at once. And then the next month, the next module will open up, and we'll work through the semester. That's the available date. Usually at the beginning of each module, everything's open. Things are due. Some things are due at the same close date, like your discussions and your quizzes. When they're due, they're due, and you can't do them any later than that. So get those discussions and quizzes done um, on or before the due date. Now, your things like your labs, they have a close date, which is after the due date. The labs are open for three days, okay? And then they close, and then you can't submit them to Canvas anymore for credit. Now, I take 10 points off each day a lab is late, but the labs are important, and I know things happen. You're like, oh, I'll put it off. I'll do the lab the day it's due, and then your work calls in, and you have to pull a double, triple overtime, and there's no way you can do it. Go home, get some sleep after work, wake up the next day, do your lab, turn it in. You'll be penalized, but you won't get a zero, okay, because your labs are important. Your exams and other assignments, again, they're open the entire module. So there's, there's plenty of time to get things done. It's up to you, being an online student, to manage your time. Okay? So labs, again, three days after the due date, you can turn them in for 10 points off. This is where you'll have to balance, do I hurry up and finish the lab and turn it in on the, by the due date? and not get penalized? Or do I take an extra day or two or three and do an excellent job and turn it in and then just take the penalty, right? If you've only got half your lab done by the time it's due and you turn it in, you're gonna get up to what, a 50%? But if you give yourself an extra three days and do that other half of the lab and turn in a great lab that gets 100 and you get penalized out 30 points, you end up with a 70%. So you've got to balance that choice out. I, I'm giving you that possibility. <clears throat> your things like your project proposal and your product data check will be accepted late. I highly encourage you to turn it in late, better than not at all, but you won't receive any credit. Credit is given to things that are, due, that are turned in on time. Okay. Your final project accepted up to one or two days late at 20 points reduction per day. It's highly discouraged to turn in your final project late. Look, I just don't have more time to give you. It's due at the end of the semester, and then I have to take a day or two to grade them all and then turn in my grades. I literally don't have any more time to give other than that. So I highly discourage turning that in late. Okay. It's always advantageous to turn in something than nothing. Those zeros really bring down the GPA. Okay. Class attendance, online learning environment. Okay. There's no class attendance policy, like you're not showing up to class, but turning in your work is your attendance policy. I expect you to participate and do the discussions and turn in your labs and take your quizzes and get your tests knocked out. Okay? Um, being in an online system, you're going to be typing messages and people are going to be reading these messages on the boards. Be polite. right? These students, your colleagues, you may be working with in the future or you may run into them in the future. You may need something. They might be the paramedic that shows up to save your family member's life, right? They might be the person that's making the birthday cake for you just like the way you like it, right? We're all connected. We're all part of um, a system here. So be kind. Please don't troll. Save that for your Discord or something or playing Among Us.
Okay. Communication. I encourage you to ask questions. Share what you've learned. I'm trying to teach you how the world works, how it functions, how dangerous it is, and how to recognize those dangers and maybe like avoid them and not die. And I encourage you to share that knowledge with your friends and family. Okay. If you have questions, please email me. I will try to get back to you uh, within 24 hours or 48 hours. Uh, if you email me though at Friday at midnight, I might not get back to you till Monday, right? Okay. Here's a big one, class. We need to talk about plagiarism, okay? Don't do it. Some of y'all might be in high school. Some of y'all might be fresh out of high school. Some of y'all may be veteran college students that have been doing this for so long that you're so tired of it. But please, whatever you do, do not fall to the dark side. Do not turn to plagiarism. It is not accepted in college. It is not an acceptable thing to turn in somebody else's work as your own. Hey. Okay? I like to kind of think of it this way. I know you're in an art class or a science class or an English class or a history class or a language class, but treat it all like an art class. Okay? If I were to assign to you to paint a still life and turn it in, like go home, paint a still life and turn it in, if you went to a museum and stole a painting off the wall and showed up to my class and turned it in and said, here's my still life painting. And I looked at it and was like, wow, this is a great still life painting of a banana and an apple or something. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I spent all night doing it, right? And I look at this and I go, yeah, this looks kind of familiar. And then I get on, you know, Google or I go to the art museum and I see that you just stole the painting and passed it off as your own. That's not cool. That's not your work. You don't get any credit. You didn't paint, right? It's the same way with all your other classes. If you just take somebody's text and paste it in your assignment and say, here's my work, it's not your work, okay? So you don't get credit for copying somebody else's writing. You don't get credit for quoting somebody. You can quote somebody, but then write about their quote and put it in your own words. Your words are what you get credit for. That's what we're looking for in college, is that you can look at something, you can read something, you can look at that still life painting of a banana and an apple and do it yourself and turn that in, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not looking for the Mona Lisa. I just want to see that you saw something and read something and thought about something and was able to tell me about it and how you think and feel about it or how it is in the real world, what your perception is of it. That's what college is about. That's what you get graded on. So please do not cut and paste. It's going to get, look, you're going to get three quarters of the way through the semester and you're going to get burnt out and you're going to be like, oh, I got this assignment too. I'm just going to go to Wikipedia or Encyclopedia Britannica and cut and paste and done. Or I'm going to just add a few words instead of and I'm going to put the or throw a period in here or change this or that. Um, no, if 90% of the words are somebody else's, that's still plagiarism. Or it's going to be like, ah, oh, my friend took this class last semester or my brother took this last year, I got all his labs, I'm just gonna turn in his labs. That's gonna set up red flags and I'm gonna see that it's the same as your brothers or the same as your friends or 80 or 90% is the same lab. It's gonna get flagged, it's gonna get marked and we're gonna have to have a talk. And if that keeps happening, we're gonna have disciplinary action. And if it keeps happening, it's going to get reviewed to the college and what might happen is your record gets a permanent mark like a big I am a cheater mark on your transcript 
and that will follow you the rest of your life. Other schools will look at your transcript and see, oh, they're a cheater. They cheated, tried to cheat their way through college. And your future employers will get your transcripts, maybe, unless you work for your uncle or something. And they'll see, oh, you took all these classes, but it says you have a propensity to cheat a bunch. Yeah, we really don't want you working for us because you might steal our trade secrets and stuff. Or do a half half butt job, right? So don't plagiarize. Take your time, do the work, or don't do it at all. Please don't cheat, okay? This is college. Step up your game a little bit, all right? Next is something extremely important to me, the disability access statement. Ugh, I hate that name, disability. Look, if you or somebody you know is struggling or having problems or issues or just not on point, like if your game isn't fire, take a step back, take a breath, and go to Disability Services Office. The uh, it's, it's in the Student Center, I, I believe. Well, give them a call, look them up and talk to them. They'll run you through some tests. They'll ask you some questions. And if the learning environment that we're providing for you doesn't bring out the best in you, then we're gonna give you or try to give you a, a, an environment that does that, right? We here at, at, at Palo Alto College and every other college wants everybody to perform their best. Um, unfortunately, we only have a limited budget that we can only provide one learning environment, and that might not work for everybody, okay? And we had unlimited money, we could provide 10 different learning environments in everybody's type who, who, who excels in certain learning environments would be serviced, but, but we don't have that in our default environment. So what they'll do is if they, if they find that you need extra time to think and process things because you get easily distracted or you're living in a construction zone, somebody's building a new house next to you or they're tearing up the road or you've got some, some issues in your personal life that are distracting that um, aren't allowing you to focus or something to do with something, I, I don't know, go, go check it out because I want you to be able to take these tests with the thought clarity that every other student has okay i don't want you to be that kid that i've had at the end of the semester where they come to me and say look um you know i'm sorry for only doing half my tests i get really nervous during my tests and i freak out and i shut down and i walk away from my desk and then it times out and then i don't finish my test i get it i feel it i hate tests i get nervous i get sweaty I fail every single test I take because I second, triple, quadruple guess myself and then I freak out with time clock ticking and then I've only got an hour to take it or something and then I bomb it. Um, so I hate tests. So I've given you tests because I have to, but I've given you other assignments. So please take this seriously and go seek them out. Um, face masks, uh, we're a little bit over the pandemic, but not really. COVID's still around. There's a lot of respiratory stuff. Uh, if you come on campus and you want to wear a mask, please wear a mask. It's highly encouraged. So is social distancing. So it's not coughing on people, right? So be responsible. It's not required anymore. But um, if you want to wear a mask, hey, wear a mask. If you don't, don't wear a mask. Um, but just please be uh, conscious and considerate of uh, people around you while you're on campus. All right, at the end of this is the course outline. This breaks down the modules, uh, one, two, three, and four, and the dates that they run to, the topics and the chapters that we're covering, and the labs and discussions that are due throughout uh, that module, okay? This is sort of just like a cal event calendar uh, to remind you of what's 
going on in the layout and the structure. Now Canvas has a much more detailed um, calendar, an event calendar for you to use, but this is just for reference. Keep it handy, print it out, whatever. Okay. All right, so back to Canvas. Under Modules, link here on the left-hand side, you'll see our module structure. Each of them opens the day the module opens, um, every three to four weeks. Now your first link is to your book and some other exercises, but I encourage you really just to use this to access your book. When you as a student click on this link, it will prompt you to open it in a new window and you will be asked to log in. Please create an account using your alamo.edu email. Not your high school, not your personal email, but your alamo.edu email. Once in there, you will be brought to your Peterson Physical Geography. It might not look exactly like this, but it will be your geography content. The blue book icon here on the, the right-hand side is your book. You'll be able to expand that out if you want and go through it. There's a table of contents here, so you can go to each chapter, or you can just thumb through it one at a time. Okay? As going back to Canvas, you'll see here in Modules, for each module, I have linked to MindTap all of the assignments. So your chapter one quiz here will take you to a new window, which is MindTap. You don't have to find it in MindTap. You can use Canvas modules, okay? Your discussion will take you to a Canvas discussion. Your quiz back to MindTap. And your exam will also take you to MindTap. As you can see, there are due dates, January 24th, January 25th, January 6th. Your Module 0 introduction uh, must be done first, and then Module 1 will become available. So do the bio say, you just scribble some letters and some numbers so you're you. Uh, take a quiz about the syllabus, do your introduction discussion, and then do a, a short little assignment here that introduces to you the final project. The syllabus link can also be found under the syllabus link here in Canvas, it can be downloaded here. This is probably the most helpful page though. The syllabus page has a course summary. It tells you when things are due. So you can take a look at this. Ah, Thursday, January 19th, my quiz is due. Okay, due by midnight. And it's chronological, so you see what's coming up and what's due. Okay. At the end of each module, all of your extra credit is due. You can do it at any time, but by Sunday at midnight, when that module closes, you need to have as much extra credit done as you can, and I highly encourage that. Each module's extra credit is worth 2.5% of your overall grade. Four modules, that's an extra 10% you can get by doing your extra credit, okay? So I highly encourage you, and they're short uh, videos, exercises, they are kind of fun, right? You can get to all your discussions by the discussion link, but they're also linked in modules. The same way with assignments. If you want to find a specific assignment, they are grouped by category. Your exams are all listed here. Your labs are listed there. Your discussions and your quizzes. Cool. Well, have a great semester. Again, please reach out. Don't think that you're alone in taking this internet class. I'm really here. I have a real office. I really teach this class. And um, if you have encounter any issues or something doesn't work or something breaks, which could happen from the beginning to the end of the semester, websites go offline all the time, Email me, let me know, I'll fix it, I'll change it, I'll send out announcements, I'll work with you all in making sure that you have the best experience possible in this class. 
and you learn how to stay alive. All right? Take it easy, y'all.